This is Echo 3, and let's discuss autogyros. The term is a combination of two Greek words, autos and gyros, meaning self-turning. Therefore, a fundamental difference between autogyros and helicopters is that an autogyro's top rotor is not powered. However, as the aircraft travels forward, air flows over the blades, allowing them to autorotate and generate lift. Autogyros are not a new invention either. They have been around for almost a hundred years. Spanish engineer Juan de la Sierra saw his invention fly for the first time in January 1923. Sierra had been trying to design a plane for the Spanish military, but became frustrated by the tendency of his airplanes to stall and crash. So he set out to make a plane that could safely fly at low speeds. In the most Kerbal approach to making his plane safer, he mounted four free-spinning blades to the top of a conventional monoplane. De La Sierra's first several designs failed due to structural problems, but his fourth iteration worked. On one of the early test flights, the engine failed, but the pilot was able to safely land. This demonstrated the fundamental concept to be sound. Due to the nature of how the spinning blades provide lift, one side would provide more lift than the other. To solve these inconsistencies, Sierva ended up using a couple hinges. One set of hinges to allow the blades to flap up and down, and a second set to let them swing fore and aft. This resulted in even more lift. At very slow speeds, the conventional control surfaces would become ineffective. So, he invented a means to tilt the rotor. This method is still used on autogyros today. In the 1930s, the United States military became very interested in aircraft that could make short takeoff and landings. Working off of some of Sierra's designs, Wallace and Rod Kellett added bigger blades, a wider fuselage, and a larger engine in order to construct their K2 and K3 autogyros. The Army was interested in their design to aid in forward observation. Ultimately though, the Army didn't think that the Kellett's brothers' aircraft fit their needs. But, one K-3 went with Admiral Richard E. Byrd on his Antarctic expedition in 1933 and 34. A modified K-2 is on display at the National Museum of the United States Air Force in Ohio. Let's head over to the hangar and see how to make one of these in Kerbal Space Program. I'm going to be making a more modern looking one using an enclosed cockpit. The craft will not need a lot of parts to be functional. We can add a small fuel tank. We can remove the oxidizer as we'll not be needing it. Then we can add an aerodynamic nose piece. To power our craft, we'll be using a turboshaft engine mounted in a pusher configuration. We can greatly reduce the motor size. I'm using just 8%. We can also reduce the revolutions per minute to 300. I found that this helped a lot with the torque induced roll. We can keep the motor direction as clockwise, but then we can invert the motor direction. This means that we'll still be using clockwise propellers. The last setup with the rotor is to set the attachment points to three. Then we can attach three of the R25 duct fan blades. We can use an adjustable ramp intake on top of the craft to mount our top rotor. I like this particular part because it's lightweight and personally has a more modern look to it. For my older style auto gyros, I use structural pieces and struts. Concerning the propellers, I have done some testing. On other gyro planes, I used six of the medium sized fan blades with similar results. Four medium fan blades were insufficient though. The blades, on a side note, do need to be mounted with the stripe side towards the front of the craft. And I'm just positioning this ramp intake so it's low and towards the front of the craft. This craft will be using some stubby wings. These will be where we mount our ailerons. Most modern auto gyros do not use these as they are able to achieve roll control entirely with the rotors. This tutorial is geared towards players new to gyroplanes and this ends up being a simple workable solution similar to how the early ones worked in real life. We will still need a small tail section for mounting an elevator and rudders. This craft will fly very similar to an airplane so these control surfaces are necessary. One does need to remember that if the craft is flying too slowly the rudders will not work. In 1927 Engelbert Zaschke invented the Zaschke machine or Zaschke helicopter it's more a combination helicopter autogyro that is able to hover and land vertically. We're not going to be making one of those today though. I did find that by putting the ailerons on wide on the craft it really helped me gain a lot of roll control. I had some other crafts that did work well without needing the stubby wings like this, but it took me a lot of time and testing going back to the hangar and back out to the runway and I wanted to spare all of that, so I'm just going to make a pretty simple craft that works 
right away that you guys can copy if you are interested in. For the top rotor, we can just use one of the small electric rotors. Since this rotor is not going to be powered, we might as well save weight. I use the absolute rotate tool to ensure the rotor is initially placed on perfectly straight. I have tried using various numbers of blades. For this size of craft, I found that four of the medium helicopter blades work pretty well. Two did not provide enough lift, and two of the largest blades made the craft far too top heavy and unwieldy. We can assign roll and pitch control to the blades. We also need to deploy the blades inverted. What I found worked best for me is to deploy the blades at 10 degrees and give them 10 degrees of control authority. Now, we need to rotate the rotor back 10 degrees. Our rotor blade should then appear level on our screen. That's kind of why I'm changed to this view. This is why I made sure to place the rotor on perfectly level initially. This part is where I spent the most time tweaking my craft, and I'm confident that other configurations can work, but I've had the most success in doing it this way. Our centers of mass and lift look good. Now we can add a set of landing gear. On this craft, we're going to use a tricycle arrangement. The original auto gyros used a conventional arrangement, and that would make sense since they had the engine mounted on the front. I'm mounting all the landing gear on the fuselage and then moving them the exact same amount so they'll be perfectly level. I found that that really helps with takeoff and getting the air flowing properly over the top rotor. And I'm also going to be moving these pieces down just a little bit. That will help get our center of mass in line with our center of thrust. And we look like we are in pretty good shape as far as our center of mass, our center of thrust. I like to increase the brakes on the rear landing gear. It just helps with stopping and keeping the craft from tilting. Finally, it's time to set up our action groups and the Cal 1000. We can unbind the rotors from the brake action group and give them a separate brake with the abort action. I like to toggle the motor power with the RCS action group. The pusher propellers need to be bound to the Cal 1000 and the Cal itself bound to the main throttle. This gives us a constant speed variable pitch blade setup. In the Cal 1000 editor, we need to set the deployment angle. I'm going to go with 0 to 25 degrees. This will make the propellers very responsive to the throttle input, but will limit our top end speed. I also turn off the reaction wheels so that you can see that this craft is entirely aerodynamically stable. Alright, with Jeb in the cockpit, we're going to go ahead and take this thing out for a little test flight. In real life, sometimes various methods are used to get the top rotor spinning. This can be done in the game by powering the top rotor just a little, then turning it off right away. Or you could use something with separatons and really getting the top rotor moving quite a bit. This can help reduce the distance needed for takeoff, but I will not be dealing with that. This craft doesn't need much runway as it is. I like using SAS. It does a good job with the helicopter blades keeping the craft stable. As we fly around, you can see that the craft handles well, even at low speeds. That's one of the main reasons these craft have remained popular today. Even my designs that didn't work out very well, they wouldn't crash very hard. They remained at least somewhat controllable all the way down to the ground, and I never killed Jeb in all of my testing with these things. I also found that by pulling up a little, I could kill all of my forward velocity and land pretty much like a helicopter. I am Echo3. Thanks for joining me to discuss autogyros. I will see you next time.